It seems really unfitting that this was our final final moments alive was held in this place which is now just ruins and rubble, there's nothing of it, look, it's just a mound of earth. When thinking about the horrible and tragic events that happened many hundreds of years ago, it can be difficult to make a connection and feel empathy. And so what I like to do, just like with the Culloden battlefield or any other place where something truly momentous happened centuries ago, is I like to go there, touch the ground and sit in silence. It's in moments like this I believe you can reconnect and perhaps feel the energies that may exist on these locations in perpetuity throughout time. In today's video, I'm looking to make exactly such a connection with a giant of Scottish history, Mary, Queen of Scots. You know, there are so many beautiful, amazing old castles in England and Scotland, absolutely beautiful examples of castles way back from like the 11, 12, 1300s. They're still preserved, you can still walk around them. Some of them are ruinous, but they're still there. You can see the essence of the castle. Well, the castle I'm taking you today has none of that. I'm not even sure we're gonna see anything resembling what a castle is or was, but it's still historically significant. And I wanted to bring you here today for a very important reason. Here we are, and literally, like I said, there's not much here other than a very pretty green grass area. No metal detecting whatsoever. There's big trouble if you dare try to metal detect here. Imagine the type of things you might find. That'd be incredible. Can't do it though. There's a little push gate thing here, presumably to keep animals in. So, I don't know if you can see behind me here, but there's like a dip in the ground here just as you come in. Now that would have been the moat. It's actually a bit swampy down there now, even till today. That was the moat. This here would have been kind of like a drawbridge into the entrance here. The moat goes all the way around. This is a different type of castle to the ones you typically see in Scotland nowadays. Fotheringay Castle, and I'm not even sure if I'm saying this right, is situated just outside the city of Peterborough in the south of England about two hours drive outside of London. It seems tragic that her life ended in such a place and it has literally faded almost totally out of sight. So I wanted to come here for myself and document it as it is today. When you're here, you really have to use your imagination because there's not, there's not much to kind of guide you. But right here, as we're walking on this path, it would have been the, the entry point, really, the gatehouse. The main turrets of the castle would have even been up on this mound. And all this now, as we come through, would have been in the wall now. We've just passed the area where we would have come into the wall. And then all up here would have been the kind of yards of the castle, with the great hall over there, the chapel. I've actually just come across something quite, quite funny, because you don't see this often in England, and that is some thistles, which I think is quite fitting, considering what happened here. So many grasshoppers. Grasshoppers everywhere here. You really kind of guess in here. The big mound up there, where the kind of high bit of the castle would have been. Towards this end of the moat, the moat goes all the way around here. Towards this end would have been the chapel, and the hall would have been towards the back end here. And it was the great hall, which had 300 people in it, and that fateful day is where Mary Queen of Scots would have been beheaded. I kind of feel like we're standing on sacred ground here. I kind of feel like we're walking through and standing on right at this moment, sacred ground. It could have been anywhere here where I'm standing. Could have been the exact spot. I'm now standing up on the opposite end of where the main kind of turrets of the castle would have been. So this would have been the outer wall and then the moat down here. And the great hall would literally have been right here in this patch of grass in front of me. We're gonna to have to use our imagination, folks, but the sounds here, the sounds of the, the grasshoppers and other insects. So weird to be walking through a place where such a big historical event happened and where someone who was a true Scottish legend 
someone whose story has been passed down through generations for hundreds and hundreds of years, was unjustly executed by her own cousin, the Queen of England. Mary Stuart, or Mary Queen of Scots, her story is long, full of adventure and deeply intriguing. She reigned as Scotland's Queen from the years of 1542 to 1587. I won't go into her early life story, but the reason she ended up here is that her cousin, Queen Elizabeth I of England, became fearful that Mary was seeking to take her throne. Mary, who fled Scotland due to political struggles within Scotland, initially sought her cousin's protection. Instead, Queen Elizabeth put Mary in prison on charges of treason. Mary remained in custody in England in various different castles for 18 and a half years. After 18 years, Mary was put on trial and was found guilty of a plot to assassinate Elizabeth. And so she was brought here to Fotheringay Castle. Her story doesn't quite end there though, with Elizabeth failing to produce an heir. Mary's only son, James, became the King of Scotland and England, becoming the first king to unify the crowns of Scotland and England together. So Mott and Bailey Castle was basically a weird design that they did back in those days where the Mott was built on top of a kind of mound of earth, which is where I'm standing right now. It's like a big pile of earth and the mot would have been built up here. The bailey within the castle walls was down there. And you can almost just make out the perfect outline. So basically from the river there, all the way around here, was a big moat. And within that moat, on that flat bit of ground around there, is where the village, not a village, is where all the kind of outhouses of the castle would have been, including the Great Hall where Mary Queen of Scots was beheaded, down on that flat bit of land there on the grass. On the one side there, towards the end of the moat, there would have been a small chapel, there would have been some outhouses, and then right in the middle of the field there would have been the Great Hall, towards the back end of the moat there. I'm referring to my phone here on Google for the picture of what I'm looking at, so that's how I can tell kind of what I'm looking at and kind of the spot where Mary Queen of Scots was executed. Um, it's not going to be an exact science, like I said, we are guessing pretty much, but it's as good as we can do. Uh, and it's still it's just pretty awesome to come here. Down here next to the river, they've got this big giant kind of brick thing encased in a fence. Basically what this is, and I think there's a sign on the other side that's going to tell me, but this is the last remaining piece of masonry from the original castle. The only brick and rock that survives here on this site is this little bit here. The rest of it was all taken away just 50 years after Mary Queen of Scots was executed, just 50 years the whole castle was dismantled and all the brick and rock was taken away to build people's houses in the local area. In fact, there's still a couple of buildings that stand today that have the bricks from the original castle here, but here on site, this is the only piece of masonry remaining from those days. So this rock here would have been standing within the castle around about the same time as Mary Queen of Scots was here and was executed. You see here, there is a plaque next to the, the bit of stone keep, the last remaining stone of the castle. In memory of Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots, it says, Beheaded in the Great Hall of Fotheringay Castle, 8th February 1586. This memorial was placed here by the Stuart History Society in 1964, and it's no accident that I've got the Stuart tartan on today. There's also somebody has placed a couple of ribbons of tartan Stuart across the top, and I've actually brought a bit of an offering 
for Mary Stewart. Because I don't know if I believe in all this kind of stuff like spirituality and all that. I don't know. I don't know the answer, but you might have seen my videos from Culloden Battlefield when weird things happened when I took Heather off the field. I brought it back, but I went up the Scottish mountains last year and I got some heather, right? Got some heather and I dried it in a book and a lot of that's still at home, but I brought a little piece today, which I thought would play somewhere here in the castle to remember Mary Stewart. Because I think she would like the fact, if she was up there watching, I think she'd like the fact that somebody remembers her. And of course in Scotland, a lot of people remember her. Because, you know, she might have done a lot of good and bad in her life, who knows? So many stories, but ultimately she was our queen. And we Scots are loyal and true. Most of us anyway, apart from the ones who gave her over. And because of that fact, we remember our Mary Stuart, Mary Queen of Scots, quite fondly. So I'm going to leave this piece of heather here on the castle, because like when we die, who knows, like, will people remember us in future generations? For most of us, the answer's probably not, unless we do something remarkable in our lives. That's such a kind of sad, morbid thing, but for some people, like Mary Queen of Scots, we, people do remember her, generations later, hundreds and hundreds of years later. I've got this plaque in the castle for her here, and I mean, it seems really unfitting that this was her final, final moments alive was held in this place, which is now just ruins and rubble. There's nothing of it, look, it's just a mound of earth. I mean, it's beautiful here, beautiful gardens, beautiful grass, beautiful wild flowers, and a beautiful river down here as well, but there's nothing more physical. But some people remember, and I thought that would be quite nice to bring something from Scotland, something from the Scottish Highlands. So I'm gonna leave this here. This was picked last year in the Scottish Highlands, a nice, lovely bit of heather which I've pressed in a book. I'm gonna leave it here for Mary. I think I'm probably about as close as I'll get to finding the exact spot where Mary Queen of Scots was beheaded. The back wall, the moat, the castle was there. Chapel, the lodging house is just over here. The main hall would have been in this general vicinity. And they crammed 300 people into that hall that day. Mary Queen of Scots, when she came out, she was wearing black robes. And when they de-robed her ready for her beheading, underneath she revealed a final party trick. She had red gowns on, which is known as the colour of martyrdom in her Catholic faith. It was a final surprise. She said a prayer. She put her head on the block. An executioner, first attempt, actually hit her in the back of the head. It took three attempts to sever her head off. Brutal, brutal ending. And underneath her dress, legend has it, that she had a little terrier dog and it was found cowering under her dress just after she got beheaded by the executioner. The executioner lifted her head off the ground by her hair, discovered it was actually a wig, so her head fell to the ground. And that is the story of Mary Queen of Scots' final moments right here in this spot in Fotheringay Castle. We take a moment of silence here, just sitting listen to the grasshoppers. And I always say this because I've traveled around Scotland to some of these famous sites where famous people like Mary Queen of Scots lived, worked, reigned, raised their kids, you know, Edinburgh Castle, Holyrood Palace, Craigmiller Castle, 
all these places close to me in Edinburgh where she was. And here is our final, final moments alive. It feels like I'm on sacred ground and it feels like here in the peace of nature, in the sounds of nature, in this spot, it's about as close as I can get to connecting with her, really. You know, like I said, I don't know if I believe in spirituality and all that kind of stuff, but if that is real, I mean, this is about as close as I'll get to it, I would imagine. Nothing but the sound of grasshoppers. Up there behind me is the Mott, the high point, the castle. Down here where I'm sitting would have been exactly where the Great Hall is. Or was. Such a peaceful moment, such a peaceful spot. And it is in this moment that I can sit here and try and connect a little bit. Connect with a true Scottish legend. Drawings of the castle from the time give us our only glimpse into what the castle must have been like in those days and on the day of the execution. Meanwhile, there are also many detailed drawings of the execution event itself and lots of stories from the day. Something really fascinating is you're not allowed to do any metal detecting here. And here, by the way, is the exact spot where Mary Queen of Scots would have had her final moments in the Great Hall, right? You're not allowed to do any metal detecting to disturb the ground, to do any research or anything like that. But, as you can see here, there's a rabbit mound with rabbit poop right there. The rabbit has disturbed us, and all over here there's little rabbit holes. And they've disturbed the ground a little bit, and some of the things they've kicked up out of the ground, you know, quite deep in the ground, were probably masonry from the castle, like this little stone here. I mean, who knows, but it would have definitely been here. This rabbit's probably kicked up from a foot or two down below. This is a bit of masonry that definitely would have been part of the castle, maybe part of the Great Hall itself, where Mary Queen of Scots was in her final moments. It's fascinating. Look, here's another one, that's a rabbit hole. Lots of rabbit poop there, and you can see some of the stones that have been kicked out by the rabbits. Could have been part of the castle's foundations, part of the Great Hall's foundations, maybe. Alright, I think I know when I've overstayed my welcome a little bit. It is about to absolutely hammer down. I'm about to be caught out. There is a tin roof here though. This might do. Found a barn. Oh my god. Did you hear that? Alright guys, I think I'm in a bit of soapy bubble now. They said today the weather forecast was for it to be clear until mid-afternoon and then it was going to be heavy downpours for the rest of the day with severe chance of thunder and lightning and I'm pretty terrified right now, I have to admit. I don't know, are you safe inside a metal, a metal barnyard? That's what I'm in right now, covered in metal. Does that not mean I'm protected from the lightning? I think it does. If the lightning hits, it's gonna like go around it, like if you're in a car and not hit me. But I wanna get back to the car, I wanna get going. I um, don't know, I'm toying with the idea of just making an absolute run for it. I don't wanna be out in the open and exposed, but it's gonna get worse and worse, this rain which means I'm in trouble, I need to get moving or stay here for the long duration inside this metallic barn which is surely a conductor for lightning and the rain's getting heavier
I'm like a ball of sweat right now. The humidity here is unbelievable. I've got good news and I've got bad news. Bad news is it looks like I'm stuck here for the duration. The good news is the sounding here is epic of the rain hitting the metallic sides and the roof of this barn. So what I've done is I've recorded a good recording for my ambient adventure channel where I record relaxing sounds for you guys to listen to to help you relax and sleep and all that. My God, the light here is playing havoc on... I don't look like that. That's unnatural, that's better. So in this barnyard, I've recorded some ambient sounds for my ambient adventure channel where I make videos and sounds for you guys to relax and sleep, like raindrops. So I took the opportunity and I've recorded the sound in here and it sounds great. But I don't think I'm leaving here anytime soon. That's the bad news. Join me in part two where I eventually escape from this shelter, get caught in a biblical storm and end up on national television. Patreon members get early access and I'd hugely appreciate if you'd consider becoming a member, supporting my content and getting access to some really great benefits. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider sharing this video with your friends and family and I will see you next week. Thank <music> you.